Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chua. Today, let's get to know Mungo the Meraxis. Meraxis was actually a dinosaur that was collected more than 10 years ago. However, it was not until 2022 that scientists sorted out its fossils and described this animal carefully. Yet, it was only a relatively preliminary study, and many more in-depth details have to wait for further scientific research to reveal. Still, the unearthed Meraxis allowed us to clearly understand the tribe of Giganotosaurini, a small branch of the family Carcharodontosauridae. Like its close relative, Giganotosaurus, Meraxis had a very long and huge body, which could reach about 11 meters, almost the same body length as the later Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus. This dinosaur had many unique features, and the much information it displayed also provided additional new features to the big guys like Mapusaurus or Giganotosaurus. Because the specimen of Meraxis was preserved quite intact and, most importantly, with a skull. Through this skull, we can see what dinosaurs in the tribe Giganotosaurini really looked like. In the past, whether it was Mapusaurus or Giganotosaurus, their skull remains were fragmentary, and there was always a missing part, especially the jugal bone. This part of Meraxis has been preserved completely, which lets us know what the face of this dinosaur looked like. It looks like this model shows. The head was slightly closer to a triangle. The restoration of the jugal bone is not as prominent and downward as previously speculated. Its temporal fenestry were narrow and small, not as huge as those of Giganotosaurus, restored in the early years, so its head looked much regular, more like Tyrannosaurus rex, a little short and tall. Like Giganotosaurus, its two relatively developed crests with rough structures on both sides of the nose bridge were preserved, but they were in better condition than those of Giganotosaurus, only a small part of which was preserved. However, the complete remains of Meraxis show us the exact transitional shape from the nose bridge to the eyes, as shown in the model. There was a very rough decorative structure on the mouth of Meraxis, which was also found on the face of Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex. A common theory generally adopted is that resembling the facial armor of crocodiles, this structure might correspond to trigeminal nerves. Each dent on the surface corresponded to a relatively large-scale protrusion, similar to this position of the crocodile's face. The same might be true of Meraxis. We also adopted this theory to do the restoration, making its teeth exposed and a layer of hard skin on the surface of the mouth, because the bone surface of this part was very rough, not a structure connected with thinner or softer skin. Therefore, when we restored it, we presented the feeling of thick armor, which conforms to the feature of the structure near the mouth it should have. When this large animal bit its prey fiercely, this structure could protect its mouth. According to the texture displayed by the fossil, we arranged the scales around Meraxis' mouth, because the fossil of this part is well preserved and quite clear, showing the shape of each individual on this part. For example, the large scales here should look like this. In addition, it's a pity that the lower jaw of Meraxis was not preserved. Generally, we can speculate on the shape of its lower jaw, based on that of Mapusaurus and Giganotosaurus, which probably looked like this. Similar to Mapusaurus, the rear articulation of its sorangula might be relatively further forward, so that the lower part of its head, the lower jaw, was slightly longer. Then, let's talk about its body. Giganotosaurus had a well-preserved body, which was the dinosaur that preserved the most complete body skeleton before Meraxis was unearthed. The body of Meraxis was quite similar to that of Giganotosaurus, but there were some differences. First of all, its body was smaller and not that thick. A more prominent part is its pelvis, which was rather strange. The neural spines on its sacral vertebrae shaped like a saddle, with both ends upturned and the middle concave down. This structure was rarely seen on dinosaurs, but some did have such a structure, such as Spinosaurus. Now we know that the general restoration of Spinosaurus always shows a downward concave at this position of the pelvis. Ichthyovenator, a Spinosaurid dinosaur, also had a concave on its back. Concavenator corcovatus in the family Carcharodontosauridae also had a dent in this position, making it form to such structures. However, whether it's Concavenator or Ichthyovenator, 
there is little research on how this groove formed and what role this structure played. This specimen of Maraxis also displays such a feature. Still, people have not done much research on it. There are several speculations about this groove. One is that it could fix the tail muscles, and might be the starting point of the tail muscles, because we know that the two upper groups of muscles on the dinosaur tail were connected to this position, and it might help raise its tail. This part of the muscles might be able to accommodate more force, allowing its tail to be raised, or making it easier to lift its front body. This is unclear now, and we look forward to more in-depth research. Relatively complete forelimbs of Maraxis were preserved, even an entire second finger, which benefits in restoring the forelimbs of this dinosaur. After restoration, it was found that the forelimbs of Maraxis were very short, and they even looked skinny, like those of Tyrannosaurus rex. According to the bones of its fingers, we can infer that the fingers of this dinosaur were relatively thin and small. Unfortunately, the nails were not preserved, so we still made the first finger bigger and the other two slightly smaller, according to the restoration method of common dinosaurs like Allosaurus. Intact hind limbs of Maraxis were preserved, which were very long, indicating this dinosaur could run fast. The hind limbs appeared relatively slender, and with the width of its pelvis, we speculate that its hind limbs were not particularly thick, but rather slender and possibly agile. The rarest thing is that the feet of Maraxis were preserved, the first discovery among this type of dinosaur. There are no exceptionally well-preserved foot fossils of either Giganotosaurus or Mapusaurus, but the foot remains of Maraxis were collected. The fossils also reveal a unique feature of Maraxis, its second toe was huge, as this shows, just like that of Dromaeosaurus. We know that the second toe of Deinonychosaurs, such as Dromaeosaurus and Truden, became very large. Among modern animals, the second toe of the cassowary is also very large. Some other birds also have relatively developed second toes. Generally speaking, this second toe may be used to cut or pierce. The second toe of Maraxis was huge, and scientists did not go into further study, but it was likely to be used to kick. Because although its second toe was huge, it was unlike the hook shape of Deinonychus. It was relatively flat, more like that of a cassowary. A cassowary can easily kick through a wooden board with its second toe, and the same might be true for Maraxis. It could attack its prey with this toe frequently. However, because the article or scholar's research has not discussed it in depth, we are not clear about its function for the time being. In addition, we can also know the foot size of Maraxis, which looks like this, and so is the ratio of each phalange of its toes. When we restored it, like today's birds and some well-preserved dinosaur fossils, we designed a toe pad under each phalange, as this model shows. If the real Maraxis stepped on the ground, the footprints it left might be similar to this. It had a small first toe, the position of which was slightly inward. Because the toenail was off the ground, it could grow very thin, long, and pointed. It had a very long tail, which was very thick and powerful. Viewed from above, the tail followed the upper pelvis and grew from the back of the ilium. You can see that this relatively large muscle extended from the top of the ilium and the two groups of back muscles extended from this position. This tail helped it maintain balance, like most dinosaurs. As a large carnivorous dinosaur, Maraxis could have a huge mouth. Although we don't have the fossils of a complete lower jaw, such a large animal must be able to open its mouth wide and gulp relatively large pieces of meat, or large young dinosaurs in one bite. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Mungo the Maraxis. Thank you all.